Welcome to 7 Under 7. In this video, you're going to learn seven or more things in under seven minutes. Yeah, no, I'm not stupid. You're looking at the timer right now and you're thinking, what the heck is this guy talking about? You'll find out in a second, okay? Keep listening. Old Planet Zoo, specifically today about landscaping. In this whole series of 7 Under 7s, you're going to learn a lot about plants, foliage and all kind of stuff, how to make gardens. And at the end, it's going to look like this and you'll be very happy to learn all these tricks. Now, if you want to see this as one entire video, you might want to become a member. It's going to be available from today on. But now, let's get going. We will do some good stuff in today's video. Hey there, uh, this is Rudy from the future. Just a little note, um, this is going to be one video available for all. I just figured it's a little bit too little in there for one video. So I just made one out of it. You don't need to become a member. You still can if you want to. But, you know, this video is available for all. I'll be having some super long tutorials available for members in the future. But for now, enjoy this one. It's one tutorial for all of you. Today's video is all about the terraforming tool. So down here in the terrain, we are going to talk about the sculpting and the painting specifically. Um, the terrain stamp tool will be for later. But um, as of now, we are going to start first of all with the basics. And this is we have eight different tools, even though I want to say not all of them are mighty relevant to you. Now, the first thing is pull. The second thing is push. The third thing is flatten the whole thing back. So, you know, it's all straight again. Then you You've got chisel, which is kind of if you have done a hand sculpting with some clay and stuff, you know exactly what that is. So you can actually go above uh, about your stuff and then just make some more precise building and you know just uh, make sure you adjust the form factor by pushing from its dedicated location. Then you've got smooth. If this uh, became a little bit too pointy for you, you can smooth it out or you can roughen the terrain like this. And then you've got these two over here, which I'm gonna leave for a little bit later. But with these basics, we can already do something very fancy. Now, let's just start with doing a very, very simple first uh, area here. So therefore, we are just going to build a little bit of path. If you haven't seen the first 7 under 7, that was all about pathing. Now I'm just going to create like a little wavy path over here as if this is something in a park. You know, very simple, very easy. This is pretty much as we go. Very neat, very tidy. So this is basically where we go. Now we want to make like an interesting looking um, planter out of this. From over here you can see there is not really anything going on. What you can do now is you can go to terrain and use the push tool first of all on the right hand side because we want to do a, an elevation difference in our area. Now what we're going to do first of all is we're going to keep the intensity of 100%. I'm going to tell you why because this is the easiest way to do some significant changes without actually too much work. So what you want to do is keep that to 4. 4 is actually quite a good radius for that. And then you want to have the inner circle as you can see point to the edge of your pathway. So what that creates is a very, very pointy edge down here that's going to bring this all down. So very much pointy, as you can see. And on the other side, we're going to do the same with the pull tool. But we are not going to go all the way. We're just going to click once or twice. Well, actually, once is enough already. And then we want to go over to the flatten to foundation tool and keep that relatively tight to your pathway. And then you do the exact same as on the other side, you know just gonna go and follow your uh, path because the pathway actually acts like a border and you can't really go into it. It's gonna create these rather ugly kind of edges over here. We're going to get rid of them in a second. This is where you're going to use the smooth tool. Now, what you wanna do is maybe not keep that on 100%. Go down to like 80 and then go back and make this like five a bit bigger for the left-hand side and then you just go over it and you can see it creates a bit of a more subtle area. We are going to change this even more in a second but this should be fine for the moment on the other side you're gonna go back to a hundred percent and go even bigger like six now what this creates you know it makes the whole ditch you made a lot more subtle as you can see now it looks like as if we've almost gotten written off everything we've done but that's only half the truth now the next tip I want to talk about before we go into any of those two it's about the painting tool now this is a very neglected tool in the game 
To be honest, at the beginning, I would always try uh, to start off taking some soil or actually some short grass. The reason why is it gets rid of the animated long grass and then you can see way better how your incline has worked. So we're gonna get rid of this, as you can tell. Now what you wanna do now is you want to use the shadowing to your advantage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with soil heavy, go to two, and then you want to do like 60 or 70 percent is fine now we're going to fill the lowest part of our ditch with this relatively quickly and what we're going to do on the other side is we're going to keep this here to the side but we're going to go with the soil light and just keep doing this here on the side as where there is the edge and then you're going to do this on this back side as well just a subtle bit and then you can have some long grass on top again just like a little bit it's it's you know just so you have a bit of these things coming up again like so and if you want you can also mix in some rock smooth but i want to go all the way down to like 30 percent it should actually be just like a tiny bit here to the pathway nothing crazy and then also just you can also bring this in here and there if you want to just like that as well on the other side it just works fine and what you want to do then and this is relatively important when it comes to making areas look coherent go back to grass short um, for the right hand side and turn the size quite high and go all the way down with the intensity I wouldn't go necessarily to 10% that just mostly doesn't do anything but 20% is okay and then just very carefully click just don't do much okay you don't need to do much just click a couple of times and you do the same on the other side, like this. It will get rid of your long grass, but it doesn't really matter too much. You can change the long grass again, because that's the last thing we're going to do now. Increase the intensity again, go all the way down to uh, even three. Sometimes I've got a hard time getting three, but if you have three, it's fine. Just get in with the long grass again. And at the very end, you can also just use your smooth tool. And one thing I would actually recommend is getting the edges a little bit better. I mean the lower and the uh, upper one over here. You're just going to increase it all to 100%, go way bigger, 5 is fine. And then just make sure that this edge is fine, this one over here is fine. At the end, this one is going to go a bit more subtle. And that one is going to go a bit more subtle. Now you've learned how to use terrain elevation to your advantage. As you can tell, there's not like a huge difference over here, but we do have a certain kind of elevation and this will make already quite a difference. You can see there is something we don't want to have. So let's get back here, make sure this is a little bit smaller and then you can actually create this as soon as it stops having these ugly edges. It looks very fine, I think, you know. Um, as soon as you've done that, this is pretty much what you needed in order to just create a little bit more of a nice area. Now, we are, have created these two inclines and I might say that this is already quite a nice starting point to do our gardening. But before we do so, let's get in with some uh, rules, first of all, to the terrains again. Because we have skipped two things in the last uh, part and this is flattened to surface or flattened to terrace or terrace. Now, flattened to surface is a pretty simple tool and what you can do with this is you can just point your mouse actually or your cursor actually at an incline until you're happy and this is something to make this whole thing look a bit more realistic now obviously this incline over here is fine because it's right next to the pathway and it would make sense because the you know uh, the pathway is kind of paved and then this can go up but the back is a little bit too sharp in my opinion so what I want to have is a little bit more of a subtle incline so this looks fine to me and now as I click, you can see it just creates this very subtle ramp um, that just connects the dots over here. And as we look at it now, it already starts to look a lot better. The same actually approves for this area. So as you can see over here, you can do the same and create a nicer um, shape all over. And I want to just do it that way and just go back down here, create something like this. This one is nice as well. And then wreath moves as we learned in the last part already. So we have a bit more of a different looking um, area. You know, it's a bit more hilly. It's a bit more different. Um, I quite like it. And what I want to do now is go to go short grass and just get rid of all the stuff around because it just annoys me in my eye. But now, yeah, there you go. Now it's cleaned up and we can get some patches of long grass in as soon um, as long as we have it that way, that is fine. Okay, now uh, as this is done, 
we can actually go in and smooth certain things out that haven't been looking too well. There you go, and all good. Now, what we will learn in this part is the basics of ground shrubbery, as I call it. Now, ground shrubbery is very important to get the looks of your planters right before we do some nature in the last part of this entire tutorial. Now, the ground shrubbery contains mostly of pieces that you know, make sure that the ground looks good. We do have the long grass in game, but barely anyone uses that and that's for a good reason. From a distance you can't see it, going closer it becomes super annoying. Now, it's good that we have it, it's better than nothing, but we have better pieces in the game by now. So, uh, it depends obviously on which DLCs you have, but one piece I highly recommend is the buffalo grass. Now, the buffalo grass does come with a very, very nice texture. It's uh, having a good LOD. So as soon as you zoom out, it's not as bad. And you've got nice size variants. As you can see, the smallest variant over here is pretty neat. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to abuse a little trick here. Um, I basically um, learned this trick over the countless hours of making nature in Zoo Sicily, for example. So what you want to do is you want to um, make sure that you've got random rotation activated and you want to go with the biggest patch and then just keep clicking. After a couple, stop doing that and select all of them, make a group. That's very important. Grouping these pieces will enable you to um, change things afterwards. Make sure that only this piece rem remains in the group. So what we're gonna do is we're going to fill all these things into the lowered area as we've done um, specifically in the last video. And you wanna do the same over here to this side, you know? Um, make sure that you really follow the line so you can always see that uh, a major, uh, the majority of the piece is already sunken into the ground because you, we only want to have a bit of ground texture. So that is pretty damn good. And the same goes to the back side of your incline over here. You can actually be, oops, that was a bit stupid. Um, you can actually be a bit more fancy like so it doesn't really matter you can also just go in here make sure it's not too neat and too tidy you want to actually make it a bit more random that is super important to make it look more natural just click these things in wherever you want so like this and ensure that you don't have too many overhangs so for example over here if i do click it here you can see there's like a little overhang over here that's gonna look ugly later on so try avoiding that now once you're happy and you've laid all that out we can actually exit the building and as soon as we've exited the building you press x to gain control over lowering it or creating higher or just move it what you want to do now is you lower it into the ground not too much just a little like so, and it creates these nice patches of where things are. Now, as we've done that, this is pretty good. We've done that already, but what we wanna do is we wanna now have something that goes very close to our pathway in order to make that look good. We are basically not going to use any type of um, nature, we're going to use a decal. That's something people don't really use that often, and this is the last tip of this segment. We are going to use, well, you can, you can use these two pieces, this type of moss and this type of moss. Both of them will be grouped in a group again, as we've done previously as well, to ensure you can recolor them on the fly. And what you want to do now is, again, check that you have random rotation activated, and then you just go on, click in right here to the corner of your pathway. You want to do it, whoops, um, very much on this side and on the other side. Uh, you know, if you're like crazy like I am, you can also do certain things like this to be a bit more efficient. You know, if you do not want to have like oops, too much uh, nice looking, you can do it also this way and mix in a little bit of the other one, you know, just like so. Click, 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 click. There you go. Once you've done that, you can basically do the same on the other side. In my specific case though, I wanna change a couple of things, but I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So I'm just going to, first of all, bring these ones in it you know it you can make this a lot more tidy than I do right now but uh, one thing I do is I'm just going to have those here and what I'm going to do is I'm splitting this from the group so we've got two different groups because I want to have a different color so first of all right hand side click in here make sure you go to moss color and then adjust the color to what you have as a grass color because it not always lines up perfectly you have to be a little bit more careful until you get the exact color Something like that is good. And then you can also always try to make sure that you, uh, you know, adjust that a little bit by adding in a color. Something that really works well as well is going into like a bit more reddish color. So just as the ground is as well, 
just hit OK. And then on the other hand side, um, I thought it might be good to just go in with a little bit more, as you can see, desaturate. That, that, that just works a little tiny bit better with the more gray dust I have over here. And that's that. You already have a pretty good ground shrubbery area. Very simple, very effective, and um, this way you can really make your areas look nice. It, it depends on what you want to do here. You can put some rocks and stuff in and make it look good. We are going to talk about the actual foliage. So for that, we're going to go to the nature tab first of all, and we've done a couple of shrubbery things. What we want to do now is we want to lay out our area. So first of all, what I want to do is you first of all need to understand what we want to do. So for my part over here, I want to go something temperate. So I'm going to use North America and Europe and I'm going to go buy them temperate, but I will also click on Taiga, Grassland and Tundra as well, because tropical should not be in here, desert neither, but these things pretty much all just kind of grow over here, just to have a little bit of a limitation. But as this game needs to be a bit more different when it comes to categorizing, it, it there will always be things that you technically could have in temporary area anyways um, and then they would be locked away if you choose certain things so i would be very careful with that but this this choice over here might be good now you want to understand that you need certain focal points in order to um, guide what your area should look like so one one thing i want to have in here is the weeping willow this one is a little bit uh, i think i'm gonna go with the big one and what i want to do is i want to drag this one over here so as like a little focal point in the back so this is pretty damn good so we have something already over there and then i want to have like another one that is pretty much a bit more over there just sinking that in so we've got already oops uh, we already have something that is framing our area now um it's also pretty clever to go with a bit more of another tree to the left hand side i assume so what we are going to do is actually you know what let's get rid of the filters I just saw that I got rid of too many trees at once because there are some other good ones we can use. So the corkwood over here is also something I really like to use. But in this specific case, the green tint does not really go well together with the weeping willow. So what I want to go with is, um, I think I'm going to go with the... Ah, uh, this one is nice, but I want. I think I'm going to go with the ash tree. Let's go with the normal ash tree. This always works, so pretty much... Um, yeah, I should have actually done this beforehand but there you go this is the ash tree this one is always pretty nice so i'm gonna put this here and you also want to see where your shadows go you don't want to have everything in the shadow so these three are basically now a triangle for me um i should basically move this one a little bit more here and now you've got this triangle formed okay and within this triangle i'm trying to now create this area so what i want to do next is i'm going to take myself some bushes we do have some proper bushes now in the game so i'm going to type in bush and we are going to use those i love i love these new bushes over here so we're going to use the smaller one um i still have random rotation activated what i like to do in order to maintain a certain angle for them because mostly they grow straight and they are not tacked to the side like this. I'm going to go to the path because it's always um, perfectly aligned. Hit V so it doesn't align to the ground anymore. And then we can just start clicking this thing down and making sure that we have certain bushes put here and there. I think this is neat. Just check from above. So this is pretty good. I think we can have one more here. Okay, that's pretty well aligned. Now, this is already pretty good in terms of having a little bit of a framing. What we want to have now is we want to have some, actually some more ground shrubbery here and there. And this one, uh, the Savola, Scavola bush is always pretty good for that. I'm going to go with the biggest one. It's like a big patch. And I'm just going to have some of those, not too many. And, you know, also here will be good. Okay, fine. We've done that. Let's go for a bit more of a nice looking plant. So this one is good. I'm just going to have something different. So this one's also pretty good. So I don't have like a perfect example of what you should go with, but this specific one having a bit of color in is very good. So let's go with the creosote bush. And um, I'm going to put this in the middle here because it has a nice color tint. And over here, I'm just going to use the smaller one and I'm going to put some in these sunken down area. And then we are already pretty much good to go. Now this area over here looks a little bit bare bone. So maybe I'm going to have something here and another one goes there awesome that already looks pretty dope that looks good to me what we don't have is something that goes here to the side so maybe we were going to go with some other ground shrubbery 
And yeah, I think the crowberry bush is always something very neat in order to have some really good ground shrubbery. And I want to tuck this here as if this is coming from those trees. And on its side, it doesn't really work with the biggest part, so you want to go with the smaller one. Um, this one might be a little bit too bushy, or you just push it into the ground as I do over here. Um, sometimes that helps just to have a tiny bit of color here and there, just making sure that you don't overdo it, because then it just looks weird um, having these pointing out. So that's good to me. One thing that I want to have is maybe one or two specific plants that we didn't have before. So, oh, we just have to do roses. I'm not really the biggest fan of that one. Um, yeah, let's go with maybe, nah, that's too colorful in this specific case. So, I think this one is good. This one should do the trick. Uh, and we can also use that as a bush. So we have one here and the other one goes here. Should be enough color for now. And we can also just do something like so and the other one as well. Make sure you always use the same thing so it kind of makes sense that the same thing would have been planted. And once you've done that, the last thing we want to add are rocks. And for rocks, you can either go with the full rocks and recolor them or go with the temperate ones in my case because we did some temperate stuff. And what you want to do, I still keep that always on random rotation and go through here and make sure that we get a little bit of, you know, uh, contrast in I think contrast is the one thing I won't mention and then as soon as you've done that you can also fill gaps that you don't visually like too much so for example over here that was something in my eye that I didn't like this one over here looks too empty to me and then I think specifically here I want to have something bigger speaking of bigger always be brave enough to also have like a boulder pointing out of the ground like that always make sure to have something smaller aligned to it so it's not like standing there completely alone and once you've done all that it's all good you just need to point down a little bit more you know of the um, soil underneath some of these things just to get a bit of framing in like so because you know there wouldn't be grass all over the place so there you go under the tree as well and then you're basically good to go that's it. You already have a pretty decent area that looks nice. And I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to grow basically your skills in doing nature. Let's do something else in the future. But for now, that's me, Camel Out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did enjoy, make sure to subscribe to the channel and all the other things. You know the drill. Until then, have a good time and goodbye.